I'm gonna give you the tools that you need to create your own training split, utilizing my philosophy. So time and time again, people try to piecemeal different workout programs together. Okay, they'll go on the internet and they'll find bits and pieces of like Jim Stepani's approach or another person's approach, and they try to just like hybridize them all together. What I wanna do is I wanna give you the basic outline and the understanding of what I do and then you can take it and run with it. And a lot of this came to light simply because of that video that Joe Rogan did with Faraz Sahabi on his podcast. And I thought that it really made a lot of sense and it reflected a lot of what I do personally. So I wanted to break this down, sort of expand upon what Joe Rogan and Faraz Sahabi talked about and give you the tools that you need. But hey, if you haven't already, I do wanna make sure that you subscribe to my channel. There's all kinds of new nutrition content coming out performance content coming out and exercise content coming out as well every single Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time for regular programming and a bunch of other videos throughout the week as well. Uh, also, make sure you head on over to highleet.com so you can check out the clothes that I'm always wearing. Okay, so first off, let's go back and break down a little bit about what Joe Rogan and Faraz Sahabi talked about. So Faraz Sahabi talked about his training methodology and what he uses with his MMA clients and what have you. And for the most part, he talked about rating of perceived exertion. He talked about how if you reduce your intensity with your training, you have more opportunities to train said body part. So to break it down simply, he said, rather than training to failure, train submaximally, train like five or six reps instead of 10, almost a failure, but not all the way to failure, and then hit with more frequency, basically giving you more opportunities to hit said body part or hit said focus group. So basically, by training with a little less intensity, you are able to be more consistent. I really love that approach and it speaks my language because that's the way that I've always been. So I wanna go ahead and I wanna break that down a little bit more with what I think. Okay, so I explained the way that he explained it with more growth cycles. That's how I look at things, okay? I look at it from a body composition side, a little less than a performance side. So the more opportunities that you have to train a body part or to train a specific subgroup or a specific kind of exercise, you get more growth cycles, more opportunities to grow or gain from that. So an example being like Faraz Sahabi talked about, if you do 20 pull-ups on Monday, that's 20 pull-ups for the week. But if I do five pull-ups on Monday, five pull-ups on Tuesday, five pull-ups on Wednesday, five, by the end of the week, if I've done five pull-ups every day, I've done 35 pull-ups, okay? So I've put myself in a much more advantageous situation for growth opportunities. Now, some will argue that growth doesn't really occur until you're in that hypertrophic range where you're actually pushing it to the limit. I disagree. I think there's a lot of science that's proving that wrong now. So I break it down further. I break it down to what I call the 80% rule, okay? And this all has to do with, again, our rating of perceived exertion. This will all make sense in a second. And, you know, I will tell you this is a little bit more of an advanced approach. So it's, it's for those that are already familiar with training but are looking for that next step. Uh, beginners can apply this too, but it just might be a little bit hard to track at first. So the 80% rule implies that on average, I would say that delayed onset muscle soreness kicks in above this, okay? Above 80% is where we tend to find ourselves getting sore and unable to train that group the next day. If I train my chest at 83%, I will probably be more sore on Tuesday, okay, the next day. So if I were to train at 80% or less, I'm more than likely able to still train that body part the next day. Now, here's the thing. That only truly applies concretely for intensity. And let me explain these variables for a second we have to break our training down into four variables always, okay? We have volume, how much you're training, how much overall workload you're putting into the muscle in a given, given day, right? We have intensity, how hard you're training, okay? What your actual uh, intensity is as far as like how heavy you're going, okay? Frequency, how often you are hitting a body part, and duration, how long is your workout? Usually more applicable to endurance or HIIT style training. Okay? These are the four variables. We always need to be shuffling emphasis to one of these variables. Okay, some days, the days that we're training with more intensity, we'd be training with less volume. Okay? The days that we're doing longer runs, we probably need to do less frequency that week. Okay? It's always a give and a take. So when it comes down to my 80% rule, this is only concrete black and white with intensity. Okay? Because we know what our maximum weights that we can lift are, and it's easy to get to 80% of that. It's easy to calculate. With volume, with frequency, with duration, we don't know what our 80% max is of that. 
but we have to use the rating of perceived exertion, which again, Joe Rogan and Faraz Sahabi talk about. They talk about that rating of perceived exertion, like where is your maximum threshold as far as you're concerned. That's why I say this is a training methodology for those that are a little bit more experienced because you guys probably know where your upper threshold is. So with volume, you have to use your best judgment. Like what is 80% of the maximum volume that you can handle? What is 80% of the maximum duration, if you're talking about running, that you can handle? Okay, on the daily, you should keep it below 80%. Okay, regardless of what you're doing. If you're training for endurance, you should keep it below 80%. If you're training for body composition, you should train all your body parts, but keep it below 80%. So essentially, train every body part close to every day. That's the sense of it. Which brings me into the next phase, and this is where it gets really crazy. Okay, this is something that I've worked on for years. And this is full body training with emphasis training. So basically, you're doing a full body focus with specific emphasis on different body parts. Uh, this is going to again, be applied for body composition or performance, which I'll make uh, sense of in one second. Here's an example. Monday, go into the gym and you do a full body workout following this 80% rule, okay? meaning you're training at six or seven reps out of 10. So not going to failure, full body. But you pick one of the above variables for one body part to put extra emphasis on. Example. Monday, walk into the gym. I train my full body, but I decide I want to have focus on my legs today. So what I will do is I will pick one variable that I want to add into my workout for my legs. Let's just say it's intensity. So what that would look like is my full body routine is normal, and then I train my legs, and I'm going to go above 80% with my intensity on Monday. I'm not blasting my legs. I'm not going in and just hitting my legs. I'm not even putting a ton of focus on my legs. I'm putting a slight emphasis. Okay, I think there's a difference between focus and emphasis. A little bit of just an extra bit of attention to the legs, okay? Now, I don't have to do intensity. I could have done volume, okay? I could have done duration. I could have done any one of these as my, as my pick of the litter. Volume would have just meant that I did more exercises for my legs. Intensity means I would have hit my legs harder. But at the end of the day, I'm still training full body with just with a slight emphasis. So if it was a circuit, maybe I have six movements that I'm doing in the full circuit. If I'm doing more intensity for legs, I would go to full failure. If I was doing more volume for legs, maybe two of those six exercises would have been leg movements. You see what I'm saying? There's just more focus on whatever body part. Then Tuesday comes, the next day. Guess what? It's a full body day again because a majority of these body parts have been trained under the 80% rule. So they're good to go. They're ready to, get, they're ready to get hit again and they're ready to have those optimal amounts of growth cycles. So now, full body again, but I pick a different body part and possibly a different variable. I usually recommend keeping the same variable through the course of the week. Remember, what I'm teaching you here is how to build your own workout plan. Okay, I'm not giving you my exact split. I'm giving you how I structure and periodize any kind of thing that I do or any periodization in the first place. So this is applicable not just for body composition, but also for specific training. So let me, let me rephrase that. So the way that I described this was for body composition. Like that describes someone that's trying to build a certain part of their body, right? Like chest, legs, whatever. But guess what? If you're doing a specific kind of performance training, this works too. New example. I still go in and I do full body, but this time I'm doing it in a fast paced Tabata style. Okay, maybe your high intensity interval training style where it's like a circuit where I'm moving quick and I've got battle ropes and I've got all kinds of things. I want my variable to be duration and I want it to be specific for my battle ropes because I'm doing some kind of exercise or performance that requires battle rope like movements. Okay, so that means that my variable has now become duration and the component is, of course, the battle ropes. It's the same thing. All I've done is shifted focus from body composition to performance, and that has been my variable. The next day, I pick a different one. So you see what I'm saying here? It all can be applied in different instances. And you can pick these and shuffle them however you want to, as long as all of them are under 80%, with the exception of the one that you're focusing or putting emphasis on. Now, adding one other piece to the puzzle, is progressive resistance, okay? So progressive resistance is the old school thought, well, I shouldn't say old school, it's very functional, it's very real, is that in order to get stronger, 
your muscles have to adapt and things have to adapt and you have to always be pushing yourself a little bit harder to some degree, whether it be with mobility, whether it be with intensity and strength or whether it be with endurance, progressive resistance or constantly progressing is a part of any standard periodization. So we have to do that. Now what I encourage you to do is only measure your progressive resistance on your emphasis days. Okay, so that means that I'm not gonna even keep track of what weight I'm lifting I'm only going to base on rating of perceived exertion with the exception of the one body part or the one subset in which I am focusing on one of these variables. So I will measure my legs, I will measure my squat performance only on its emphasis day. That way, the rest of the week, I'm focusing on the quality of the workout. I'm not focusing on just data. Now I'm a scientific guy and I will always say that data prevails all, like we always need to have data. But there's so many different variables when it comes down to just our hormones and different things that make us feel a certain way. Rating and perceived exertion is a much more relative way to look at working out and also look at life. So I think it's very, very important that we focus on the RPE scale just like Joe Rogan and Faraz Sahabi talk about. So I'm in full agreement with them. I just wanted to expand more. This focus right here on the workout quality is what allows for consistency and what circles right back to Faraz Sahabi's whole approach of being able to have more growth cycles or more reps over the course of a week, over the course of a month, over the course of a year, okay? Now, someone had asked me a good question when I was explaining this before. They said, well, how do I know, like, should I shuffle intensity or should I shuffle volume? You just have to go with whatever feels good. So what I mean by that is, over the course of a year, you might have only 10 leg emphasis days where you're focusing on intensity. And then you might have 10 leg emphasis days where you focus on uh, volume, okay? It's your discretion. You can shuffle it. You don't have to go one week where you focus on intensity, the next week you focus on volume. Do whatever you please. Shuffle them. That's the beauty of it. Set your periodization up the way that you want to. There's no perfect or right or wrong answer here. It's all about just shuffling it because this rating of perceived exertion applies for all of this. So the big underlying thing of all of this is consistency is the most critical. People ask me how I stay in shape all the time. It's not because I train like an animal. It's not because I come in the gym and I beat myself up. Okay, those were old days. I don't like to do that anymore. For me, it's about consistency. There are days when I come in and it's 20 or 30 minutes, but it still follows this and it's ingrained in my brain. So when you sit down and you write out your training protocol for yourself, screenshot this and remember it because this is what's gonna help you in making sure that not only you stay injury free, but you continue to perform at your best, but you continue to have something that's measurable on your emphasis days, so you not only satisfy that portion of your brain, but you also know how much harder to push it, okay? So I can expand on this more, but I need some feedback from you. So if you liked this, and you want me to expand on a specific component of it, I need you to put it down in the comment section so that I can review it and do another video on it. Again, this is a more advanced technique. I'm happy to do a simpler breakdown for someone that's maybe just getting started as well. So as always, make sure you keep it locked in here on my channel. I know this is a little bit of a different realm from what I'm normally talking about, but I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next vid.